This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Domain.com. If you've been waiting patiently for Intel's new Haswell CPUs to hit the shelves before buying a new desktop or laptop, the wait, it is officially over. Joining us to talk Haswell PC Per is Ryan Shrout. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm good, man, I'm excited. It's time to buy a new system, maybe. Been that for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, at this point I'm still obsessed with GPUs, but we don't want to talk GPUs today. So Haswell, is this a tick or a talk in Intel's processor cycle? Uh, I'll be honest, I had to look it up because I couldn't remember exactly which was which. This <laughs> is a talk in that it is a new microarchitecture mm -hmm. uh, using the same process technology that Ivy Bridge used, which was 22 nanometer. Got it. So uh, what we're seeing here, though, it's kind of funny. The benchmarks, performance-wise, the benchmarks are not a huge jump. Uh, no, w when you look at x86 performance, um, the, the reality is, is CPU performance is, is tough to come by if you're not increasing the clock speed. We're not really seeing any higher clock speeds with Haswell than we did with the Ivy Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of IPC increases, you're looking somewhere between 5 and 15 percent, depending on the application. You can actually go above that if there are programs that take advantage of some of the new uh, instructions like uh, AVX2 and uh, TSX and all that kind of stuff, but uh, those are a lot more rare right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say the improvement from Ivy Bridge to Haswell is definitely better than you got from Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, so th there are there are some to be had there. If if you're on a Sandy Bridge system today, do I think you need to upgrade for CPU performance? And eh, maybe not. But um, there are graphics benefits and platform benefits and that kind of stuff. So the big thing with Haswell for Intel was reducing power consumption. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I think Intel's claiming 50% gain in battery life for laptops. Has has anybody had a chance to test one yet? Uh, I have not, and I, don't, I haven't seen anybody report on actually reviewing actual laptops based on Haswell yet. I think, I think kind of officially the first uh, release that happened this weekend was really on the quad-core parts, kind of the high-power parts. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, say, we've seen a couple people test uh, a mobile processor, the 4950H series part that has uh, the higher-end GT3 graphics. Um, they're claiming 50% battery life improvements, um, you know, hearing from different places, that's probably a little bit of an overestimation, as you would <laughs> guess. Um, I, but I fully expect you'll be able to see 30%, 35% increases if you look at similar chassis, similar screen sizes, similar components otherwise. I think there will be some, some, some fairly substantial changes here. You know, you've got connected standby, you've got lower, uh, lower power sleep states, mm -hmm. uh, and then just kind of general purpose architectural changes. It's pretty crazy because the, the lower power sleep states are like going from like a fifth of an amp to what, like a five hundredth of an amp. Yeah, yeah. It's it's they they change it so much that on the desktop side, some power supplies were having problems <laughs> lowering their output that much um, to deal with it. It wouldn't surprise me if some of these desktop platforms. I, I, I expect most of these desktop platforms just ignore those low power states. They're not really necessary for desktop uses. Mm -hmm. um, whereas on the mobile side, obviously everything is like kind of perfectly tuned for each individual platform. Well, let's talk about go back to desktops for a second. Z87 motherboards. What's the big highlight for the new chipset? Um, from the Intel side, uh, Z87 adds uh, four additional SATA 6G ports. So instead of having two 6G and the rest of them 3G, you now have six SATA 6G ports. It also increases USB 3.0 uh, port count to six as well. Um, you know, it's other than that, the chipset remains very similar um, with the new integration of the uh, voltage regulator on the silicon of Haswell. Mm -hmm. It changes some of the motherboard design aspects. We had a, we did have a, a board here. Um, this is the Asus Maximus 6 Extreme, and this is kind of like their super high end offering um, that we're looking at here. It's it, it's going to be a, a super overclocking style board, lots of great features on it. They've got things like if, if you like uh, external gadgets, they've got this OC panel that actually will sit on your desk or you can mount it in a five and a quarter inch bay uh, and it will give you your temperature and, and clock settings and that kind of stuff. You can actually adjust. I'm sorry, is that, a, re is that a, re a remote control for overclocking my motherboard? <laughs> Essentially, yes. Essentially, it is. That's so uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's actually it's actually a really cool little accessory that comes with their uh, their highest end kind of ROG line of boards. So you know all all the companies are going to have refreshes. They've all got new features. They've all got new technologies to show off. Um, we've started reviewing some of them on PCPer.com already. But I mean, 
we're talking 25 or 30 boards from some of these companies wow. at the outset. So it's going to take a little while to kind of wade through everything and see what stands out. So are you, are you excited about Haswell to finally be here, or are you going to get excited when you actually see the, the, the battery life benefits on the laptops? I think that's the key. I, I really do think uh, from, from a desktop perspective, it's not offering anything super extraordinary mm -hmm. for, for desktop users. Um, you know, if, if you're using integrated graphics, there are some performance improvements, but it really does come down to the mobile side. If you can get 30, 35 percent battery life improvements while also seeing performance improvements on the integrated graphics side, um, that's, you know, you're going to be able to get thinner, smaller devices. Uh, that's, that's really where I think the innovation is going to take place with Haswell. Um, and, and it's also, that's where they spent their development time, right, is making right. sure that Haswell architecture would work in as low a power states as it possibly could in as low a thermal envelopes. It's exciting. Am I, I going to be able to do serious 3D gaming yet with the chipset graphics? Uh, serious, maybe. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you if you if you're if you're willing to go under 1080p and not crank everything up, you can do some of that stuff. We saw 25 percent improvements over Ivy Bridge, maybe wow. 15 to 25 percent improvements over Ivy Bridge, um, just on the desktop side. Mm -hmm. And on the mobile side, you know, you have the higher end options of getting uh, the GT3 class graphics with 128 megs of embedded memory on there as well, which should improve performance also, but with thermal limitations on that. So uh, we're still waiting to see um, whether or not mobile vendors really start to implement that higher end, higher power version, or mm -hmm. if they decide to stick with you know, discrete GPUs from NVIDIA or AMD uh, paired with Haswell processors. One last question before we go. When do you expect to see the Haswell laptops to start showing up in stores? Uh, I think you'll start to see some of the higher end models probably by the end of June. Uh, but I would expect later into Q3, probably for the, when you start getting like the ones I'm really excited about, the Ultrabooks, the mm -hmm. super small form factor type ones, yeah. It's going to be a very good time to buy a laptop this spring. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Stroud, PCPer.com is the website to watch for more news. In fact, a bunch of Computex news coming up on PCPer.com. Ryan, thank you so much. More Techzilla coming right up, but before we do that, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. If you're setting up a website to start a new business, showcase your portfolio, or publish your blog, Domain.com is the best place to go for your next great idea. And when you do, consider registering a new .com. A .com domain name is the original, and it's the best. It's globally understood, and it immediately gives credibility to your website, no matter what name you choose. Find a new .com domain name at Domain.com. We on the show here love Domain.com because they're affordable, reliable, and easy to use. Plus, Domain.com's active social media presence on Twitter, at Domain.com, and their great customer support make it a fun place to do business. We have an awesome coupon code with a big 20% discount off of Domain.com's already low prices. Use the coupon code TECHZILLA when you check out at Domain.com. That's 20% off, folks. Big time savings. And don't forget to give the TECHZILLA coupon code some love. And when you think domain names, think Domain.com. And that's a .com.